I welcome you to this um, practical workshop, Lung Clearance Index. Is it ready to use? The Lung Clearance Index for the early detection and monitoring of ventilation in homogeneity. And as you will hear in a few minutes, this is about measuring the small airways where many of our well-known diseases are likely to start. I have um, quite a long um, track of experience with multiple breath washout, not quite as long as um, um, uh, Professor Thompson, but I have actually started um, to look at multiple breath washout um, about 13 years ago, um, and the very first publication that we did was um, uh, validation of molar mass measurement against mass spectrometry. If you look at um, PubMed, then you see that there is an ever-increasing interest in multiple breath washout and the lung clearance index, and it depends on which combination of keywords you give in, uh, you um, put in. But um, if you just at, look at lung clearance index, um, there have been um, quite a few publications over the last five years, and they cover um, a wide variety of diseases. Cystic fibrosis has been studied most, but there are also quite a number of um, paper publications now on asthma, on um, COPD, and muscular disorders. So, um, this is just to, to set the scene, and I would now like to welcome Professor Bruce Thompson, who has come over um, from Australia, where he is the um, director or head of the physiology department in the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne, and he has a very long um, interest in multiple breath washout and the small airways and has um, done some collaborative work with Europe, um, has done both physiological base background studies um, as well as clinical application studies and I think he is a perfect person to introduce you to the technique and um, tell you what is already out there. Thanks very much for inviting me to speak about the whole technique. What's happened with washouts is been the right way to go about it. In fact, be quite skeptical of what it is, but now we've actually, there's so many studies and so many um, aspects of validation that's now happened that really this test is used ready for prime time, in my opinion, and let's just start using it. Physiology of the small airways is what determines disease, and that I believe fairly hard that the small airways are key in terms of driving disease, in terms of driving disease progression, and actually clinically really useful. So we need a technique that it really is very much targeted at the small airways. And the problem is, we didn't really have one. And if you think about, everyone used to say with spirometry, the FEF 2575, that's our measurement of small airways disease. Well, show me the paper that actually really nailed that very hard, and it just doesn't exist. And the issue with physiology of the small airways is it's really hard to measure. So the resistance is incredibly low. So we're trying to measure something in space somehow. We're trying to get a signal back from the periphery of the lung that has really no resistance at all. The periphery of the lung or the small airways is the silent zone of the lung because we can't hear anything and we can't see anything. And this has now rapidly changed with our measurements of uh, LCI and other techniques from the multi-breath washout. So why is it important? Well, there's a whole lot of things in here that why, what we need to be looking at are why these measurements could be important. But the ones that I'm particularly interested in is early markers of disease. And then look at rate of, decline, rate of decline of disease that we can't measure adequately at the moment. And we're also looking for responses to treatment that we haven't been able to see before. And so we need signals or tests that are more sensitive and more specific to change and detection. And I think this is what we have now with the multi-breath washouts. So it, the whole concept is really simple. Um, uh, if you wanted to go back in the mathematics of it, probably don't because it'll give you a headache. However, um, the actual simple concept of multi-breath washouts is straightforward. All we're looking at is the way nitrogen washes out of the lung. So all we're doing is doing some form of test that we're seeing how nitrogen washes out of the lung. So if the lung is perfectly mixed, 100% uh, um, efficient, you'll be able to wash it out in one breath. But it's not, not even for any of us in this room. It takes a number of breaths to wash out. So all we have here is just a picture of someone, in this particular case is bias flow, but in the way the NDD device uses is basically a demand valve. And all you're doing is breathing 100% oxygen and blowing out the air and measuring nitrogen. 
and watching how that's actually been washed out. So this is pictures from the standards document. And all we're doing is just breathing away, fairly straightforward, and we're just watching how nitrogen is being washed out of the lung. So as I said before, if you have 100% efficient lung, you'll wash out in one breath. It'll just happen instantaneously. We don't have that, so it's gonna take a number of breaths to wash the lung out in some form. So the longer, the more volume that you exhaled or rebreathe means therefore you've got um, uh, worse mix, um, gas mixing going on. So this is going to be driven, um, driven by the small airways. Um, and basically what we try and do is measure the amount of volume that you've exhaled uh, to actually redu reduce the actual exhaled nitrogen concentration down to 1 40th of what you started off with. So we now have, part of the problem is we didn't have equipment. This is my system in the lab that um, no guesses that I built it myself, but it is portable because it's got wheels and, um, <laughs> and it's handheld because you've got to push it with your hand. So um, I do call it the portable handheld device. However, um, I think um, no second guessing this, this device is a little bit more of an advancement of um, what we actually have started to have. So we now have position statements that uh, talk about what's required for the technique. And there's lots of information there about sensitivity and sensitivity of uh, or sen frequency responses of volume devices, how good your analyzers need to be, the concept of which gas, and it's something I'll touch on right at the very end, and exactly what we mean by all these techniques as well. We need reference equations. We now have reference equations. Um, Sylvia Verbank, who's one of the key leaders in multi-breath washout internationally, published these uh, uh, equations a couple of years ago. So there's now two studies out there with actual reference equations for LCI and also other um, measurements of uh, uh, multi-breath washout. This is a really interesting graph from Paul Robinson's um, article. And basically what we're showing is the patients with uh, open circles are the ones with CF. These are the ones in the closed circles are the patients with um, uh, healthy controls. And each one of these are another study talking about the differences between LCI and healthy controls. And we have patients that are in infancy, preschoolers, school age and adults. And a study after study has now demonstrated that LCI is elevated in patients with uh, cystic fibrosis compared to healthy controls. <coughs> if we want to look at patients with CF who have various levels of pseudomonas infection in terms of never um, free uh, from pseudomonas but have had it before, intermittent or chronic, clearly the people who have chronic pseudomonas infection have worse than the LCI compared to people who have never had it or healthy controls. So again, we've got another sort of reason why we potentially can do this test to actually get a marker of what their lungs are actually doing, which we may not be seeing in spirometry. And this is leading to this uh, study here where we're actually looking at CT scores of airway function. A little bit weird for some reason, the lower the score, the worse the airway function, and this is LCI here. And clearly the people, this is the normals, and this is people here with clearly um, uh, worsening airway function based on CT and also elevated LCI. And there's a nice relationship between those two. But to me, the stunning thing is here is that this is the FEV1s. So the FEV1s are normal. However, clearly LCI in some of these patients is very abnormal. So we have CT score of imaging relative to their LCI that we clearly see that there's some relationship there, but FEV1's just not cutting it. And it's just so it's just not sensitive in this particular group of this particular study. So to me, this is very exciting. If we were looking at treatment, Ivacafta is a new wonder drug, as we all know, in a specific um, phenotype of, of CF. And clearly, there's differences in their LCI on these patients who have had 15 days and 29 days of Ivacafta. That difference is not as great as seeing an FFV1. So having a nice small airways measurement is showing very significant changes in these patients with a very effective treatment in CF. So this is my second last slide, I think. Um, and we have a measurement of overall global mixing. So how about just trying to divide it up a little bit more to approximal peripheral compartments? So we can actually, and this is primarily the work of Sylvia Vernbach, where we can actually divide the lung at the diffusion front pretty much, where we can look at the small conducting uh, airways and the very peripheral uh, airways. We can divide this up within the actual washouts itself. So these are papers that I've been involved in and also Greg King's group from the Woolcock. And what we've shown that 
basically the small conducting airways um, determine airway hyper-responsiveness in patients with asthma. And in terms of severe asthma, and this is all adults, the actual asthenus actually um, is significantly determined by uh, asthma severity, control, medication use, failed to treatment, lung stiffness and symptoms. And a lot of these studies, there weren't any changes in FEV1. So clearly, we now have a very strong signal of the small airways. That's actually really important. The other little bit of warning that I'd like to put out there, you only need to go to a couple of the poster sessions that I've been to so far where everyone's now got a new version of LCI or a new version of s or SS and different gases and what have you. So there's some papers published in, in the last year or so and Philip Latson and I wrote this review. Um, and it's just a comment here that we decided to make and it was very much putting it out to the actual industry, not <laughs> industry, but us as people developing it is we really need to actually stick to something that we're actually going to validate to, to the nth degree. So we made this comment that what we're trying to achieve is some form of physiological outcome as a measure of ventilation heterogeneity. Now ventilation heterogeneity means different things for different people. It means nuclear medicine scan ventilation heterogeneity is a fundamentally different concept to multi-breath washout. However, within a multi-breath washout, what we're trying to measure is specific ventilation, convection dependent and diffusion can depend diffusion um, convection dependent heterogeneity and these are actually highly clinically significant and relevant. So what we need is a test that actually these, measures these physiologic abnormalities with the greatest accuracy and precision and ease of the patient. And that's the one that's going to be adopted in the clinic. And at this stage it's LCI, SS and NSCON are the ones that are really actually have shown to be the most promise. I'm not in any way saying nothing else will but these are the ones that we've actually been working on for the last 20 or so years that we're actually getting some, some ground. So in my view, LCI is ready for prime time and I suggest I start using it.